Have you ever heard about the stomach worm in the cat or the dog? I'm not talking about intestinal parasites like roundworms, hookworms, whipworms, tapeworms. Not at all. The stomach worm. I'm Dan. I'm a veterinarian. The most common one we think of is a nematode called Physiloptera. This really unique parasite will hide out in a lot of insects like beetles and cockroaches and you know, crickets or grasshoppers and these larvae are then ingested um, with, the, with the insect of course by a cat or dog. When the cat or dog eats these, the larvae break free and they cause the infection. The stomach worm does just that guys. It affects the stomach which is crazy right? Because we're always thinking like the stomach's really a it's a really rough environment to live in, but the stomach worm, the Physiloptera, that nematode, can actually live in the stomach. Yeah. Some doggies, some kitties have no symptoms at all. That little pesky parasite with its teeth latch onto the stomach, digest blood, take nutrients from the pet, and it lives its life without causing any pro symptoms for the cat or the dog. In other cases, it has symptoms. The way I want you to think about it is, it causes symptoms kind of like a stomach ulcer. Because what you're gonna notice is the doggy, the kitty may have black stool, right? Because if the doggy or kitty has upper GI bleeding from the stomach, you may see some black stool that's digested blood when they poop. Also, you may have chronic vomiting, nausea, all these things that would be almost like a stomach ulcer or gastritis caused by this pesky little parasite. Now, how are we gonna diagnose this? The best way, oh man, the best way is to scope the dog ear kitty, which sounds crazy, but it's the best way. What we do is we put an endoscope on there, put that tube down there, and look around. You will literally, guys, no joke, you will see the worms on the stomach or the mucosal lining of the stomach. Now, if we want to get diagnosis some other way, fecals are not a great option. I talk about fecals all the time on this channel. Talk, do, do, do your fecal exam, you know, find your parasites, find those eggs. Unfortunately, with a fecal exam, you need the eggs to float beautifully in your sugar solution. In this case, the eggs don't float very well, so you're going to miss it, so don't do that. Other thing is, if a, if a kitty or a doggy or a puppy or a kitten is vomiting a lot, guys, you can use that to try to find the eggs in a sediment or a fecal sediment. What we're doing in this case, guys, is we're not floating anything. We're looking at the whole entire uh, vomit or the whole entire poop without floating off any of the debris. So we're looking for these eggs in the debris. Crazy challenging. I would recommend sending this off to a reference lab for someone who is really good at these to try to find these eggs for you. Last, guys, is if you don't want to scope and you do not want to do a fecal or you do these, you don't find anything, but you're still worried, do we have Physiloptera, the stomach worm? The last thing you could do, and you probably do this just in general, is you deworm the doggy, deworm the kitty, because just being proactive and deworming can help clean up anything that could be missed when you're doing your tests. So things like pyrantal and panicure and different ivermectin meds and there's a whole bunch of dewormers. The nice thing is guys, most of your dewormers are going to cover a nematode like Physiloptera. So talk to your veterinarian about deworming and about testing and looking for any parasites, especially a stomach worm, if your dog has chronic upper GI problems. Vomiting, vomiting of blood, black stool, if it's chronic or acute. Again, the stomach worm is rare, but it definitely can happen. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Dan. I'm a veterinarian. You guys have a great week, and I hope you and your kitties, your doggies, are all happy and healthy.